In this video, we'll look at the concept of the fugacity coefficient and try to find a way to get the fugacity of the gas without necessarily having to know every single virial coefficient of the gas. All right, so we'll start off with our expression for the molar Gibbs energy of a, an ideal gas. So for an ideal gas, the molar Gibbs energy, the Gibbs energy divided by the number of moles, is a function of temperature and pressure. It's equal to the standard Gibbs energy at that temperature, which is at a pressure of the standard pressure, which is one bar. So that's the standard Gibbs energy plus RT log that pressure divided by the standard pressure of one bar. For a non-ideal gas, we derived in the previous video that its molar Gibbs energy as a function of temperature and pressure equals the standard Gibbs energy at that temperature plus RT log fugacity over the standard fugacity. The standard fugacity is once again one bar. And the fugacity, which is a measure of how non-ideally the, the gas behaves, as the gas behaves ideally, the fugacity and the pressure approach the same value. But the fugacity is the pressure times the following exponential of e to the second virial coefficient times pressure, plus one half third virial coefficient times pressure squared, plus et cetera, et cetera. All right, so it might be fairly complicated to get all of the virial coefficients and, and do all those things to get the fugacity. Maybe there's a, a different kind of concept we can use to get at the fugacity of a gas. Okay, so we're gonna look at this kind of uh, cycle here like we did for the entropy correction for the standard state. So the molar Gibbs energy at the given temperature and one bar is for a non-ideal gas. We're gonna look at what is the change in Gibbs energy as we go from there to the standard state, which is one bar at the same temperature, but for an ideal gas. So we're gonna do a similar type of thing. We're going to expand the gas from one bar down to a very low pressure where it behaves ideally not zero, but close enough to zero that all gases are ideal. And then we're going to compress it back up to one bar as an ideal gas and see what our, what our change is and some relations that we can derive from this. All right, so the change in the molar Gibbs energy during process one, compressing a non-ideal gas from one bar to zero. That's the integral from initial to final state, so from P down to almost zero of dg bar, which is equal to the negative integral where we've switched the limits of integration, zero to p of dg bar is equal to dg bar dp times dp. If we have a constant temperature, which we're going to have here, we're keeping the temperature constant during all these compressions and expansions, so it's an isothermal process. And this partial derivative of the molar Gibbs energy with respect to pressure is equal to the molar volume of the system. So G being a function of T and P, dG dP is equal to V, or dG bar dP equal to V bar. All right, if we look at the, Gibbs ener the molar Gibbs energy change during process two, compressing an ideal gas from approximately zero bar up to one bar, we have the integral from zero to P of dG bar ideal, which is equal to the integral from zero to P dG bar dP times dP, which is equal to the integral from zero to P of the ideal molar volume integrated over pressure. All right, since the Gibbs energy is a state function, it doesn't matter how we go from this state to this state, it just matters that we get there. So the Gibbs energy change during process three is equal to the Gibbs energy change during process one plus process two. So dG bar three equals dG bar delta G bar one plus delta G bar two. This is equal to the integral from zero bar up to P of our ideal molar volume from up here minus our real molar volume uh, integrated over pressure. So much as we've done throughout much of this playlist, the ideal molar volume obeys the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT or PV bar equals RT. So our ideal molar volume uh, V bar is RT over P. 
We also have the concept of the compressibility factor, PV bar over RT. For an ideal gas, this value is 1. For a non-ideal gas, it deviates away from 1, either in the positive or negative direction. All right, so for our uh, going from a non-ideal to an ideal gas at one bar and a given temperature, we have the integral from 0 to P of RT over P minus V bar, so our ideal molar volume minus our real molar volume, which is equal to RT. We can factor out an RT because it doesn't depend on pressure, times the integral from 0 to P of, now we have 1 over P minus V bar over RT, as we didn't have an RT here, so we put one in the denominator there. That's equal to RT times the integral from 0 to P of dP prime over P prime times 1 minus P prime V bar over RT. So there we factored out a 1 over P prime uh, from each case, so we need to add a P prime to the numerator here, as there wasn't one in there. All right, so this is equal to RT times the integral from 0 to P of dP prime over P prime times, and notice that P V bar over RT is our compressibility factor, so it's the integral of 1 minus Z. So this is equal to, if we take a minus sign for everything, 1 minus Z becomes Z minus 1. So we have minus RT integral from 0 to P, Z minus 1 over P. Okay, so <clears throat> now let's look at, we said that delta G bar 3, change in molar Gibbs energy going from a non-ideal to an ideal gas at one bar, is equal to the standard Gibbs energy minus the molar Gibbs energy at that temperature. So that's equal to, if we substitute in our equations up here, we have G naught plus RT log P over P naught for our ideal case minus G naught minus RT log F over F naught for our non-ideal case. So we can add, we can combine together those two natural logs, uh, natural log of A log X, or natural log of uh, X log A minus X log B is natural log of X log A over B. So this will be RT log P over P naught times F naught over F where I've switched these because there's a minus sign for that natural log. So this is equal to RT log P over F. So this is equal to minus RT, or I can switch the sign minus RT log F over P. And now we're going to define a quantity called the fugacity coefficient. So the fugacity coefficient is defined as the fugacity divided by the pressure. For an ideal gas, those are the same, so the fugacity coefficient equals 1, and the natural log of the fugacity coefficient equals 0. So this, uh, this change during uh, process 3 here, going from a non-ideal to an ideal gas, that's equal to minus RT log gamma, minus RT log fugacity coefficient. So if our gas is already ideal, then log gamma is 0, and there is no change in Gibbs energy during this process. But notice that uh, this equation here, minus RT log gamma, is equal to our equation down here, minus RT integral 0 to P Z minus 1 over P. So we can set these two equal to one another, divide both sides by minus RT, and what we get is the natural log of our fugacity coefficient is the integral from almost 0 to P of Z minus 1 over P integrated over the pressure. So our change in our molar Gibbs energy going from the standard, uh, going from a non-ideal to an ideal standard state is minus RT log gamma, our fugacity coefficient. That's going to be zero, closer to 0 as our gas becomes more ideal. So if we want to know the fugacity of our gas, then we take uh, e to the, we take both sides of this equation to the e power, and then natural e to the natural log of this would be gamma, and then we multiply times p, and we could get our fugacity that way. 
So if you know what the compressibility factor is as a function of pressure all the way up to the pressure that you have, you can compute the fugacity coefficient from the integral of that minus 1 over p. Or if you know what the virial coefficients are, you could get it that way. A variety of ways to get it, but the fugacity is our analog of pressure for a non-ideal gas, which allows us to compute the Gibbs energy of that non-ideal gas relative to the standard state.